so hello everybody my name is uh, stefan nera i'm from austria i'm from the danube university and i'm head here of a center for regenerative medicine dealing with orthopedics um, in the recent years uh, about five years we have um, um, done some research also concerning artificial intelligence in knee osteoarthritis uh, and um, with respect to diagnostics especially uh, the use of artificial intelligence here and um, these are my partners here. I have some industry partners, uh, computer companies actually, uh, and uh, we're doing a lot of research corporations uh, with those uh, companies. Uh, as you all know, osteoarthritis is a real pandemic. It uh, has a prevalence of about 15% in Austria. It's expected to raise up to a quarter of the whole society. Um, it has a lot of costs associated with this and the WHO has uh, considered this one of the major burdens uh, of mankind. So we rate uh, the osteoarthritis by clinical scores and also by radiological scores, uh, especially one of those is a clinical enrollment score and I will talk about this, how we assess that. Uh, the assessment of an X-ray is still a very manual thing. Uh, the orthobots or radiologists um, kind of look at the screen and kind of describe the osteoarthritis very individually, subjectively. And um, so you get many opinions to one report uh, with respect to subjective analysis. So uh, we are holding actually a set of five megabytes of uh, bytes in our hand. Uh, but we do not use them. So there would be an option to look at artificial intelligence to improve this diagnostics and actually make it more uh, objective. Uh, this is the Caligan Lawrence score, as you see here. This uh, shows you the continuous degradation of here, the medial aspect of the joint. Uh, and the Caligan Lawrence score has some uh, parameters, as you see here, and all of them are assessed semi subjectively. So it's a very, um, high incidence of uh, inter-individual variety uh, when you assess uh, such a uh, score with these uh, parameters. Uh, we looked at that and we found that uh, the single agreement rate that all the parameters are the same for one patient is very low. Uh, and also the incidence of osteoarthritis, uh, this means osteoarthritis, yes or no, is even low in this uh, cohort as you see it here. So, Osteoarthritis clinical studies, um, lack of subjectivity or objectivity, uh, they are very subjective due to these scores and uh, outcome parameters. So um, the, uh, also, especially the joint space narrowing is often assessed uh, manually, and this holds a lot of variability uh, in this uh, context. So artificial intelligence might help uh, for this data analysis and diagnostic tool. So what we consider artificial intelligence uh, is around uh, for actually a lot of time since computers are out there, uh, these uh, stimulating intelligence, but um, more recently in the 80s, there comes the machine learning. So uh, the algorithm uh, are learned by the computer scientists uh, what to look at. Uh, and the last thing which has been developed in the last 10 years is deep learning where the machine itself tries to find patterns of the data and kind of analyze uh, material uh, of imaging, uh, for instance. So the first approach that we took uh, was a machine learning approach. This means we learned the computer how to assess the Kelly Lawrence score uh, by finding certain points. And we still had to kind of find some measure points here to be uh, kind of fixed points for developing other uh, criteria. And um, so this also was not so good I mean, we looked at that, how we did that for the joint space uh, or joint space area, as you see it here, for the deformation, for the sclerosis and for the osteophytes. So the programmers kind of found uh, software uh, to learn the computer how to assess uh, those parameters. Uh, but it's still, uh, if you learn somebody or if you try uh, define criteria, you always get a lot of subjectivity in that. Uh, for instance, with the uh, joint space, uh, here you see two persons uh, where you assess the joint space. Both actually have four millimeters joint space. Um, but you see here this guy, the big guy with four millimeters already has OA, where the small person he has no OA. So uh, same joint space, um, but um, no presence or presence of OA. So we cannot take the absolute values of uh, joint space width to compare, uh, especially when it comes to progression of disease. 
uh, what does it mean um, OA is progressing fast or slow if you see this difference. So when you put it uh, relative to the height, you get different uh, scores. You see uh, the big guy already has 2.2 and the smaller lady has 6.2. Uh, so this is a normalized uh, joint space, and uh, when you have big data, uh, you can learn the, your computer to compare it to the height and kind of uh, have no um, relation to the height and uh, be more comparable uh, with your uh, data. So this was what we actually did. We zoomed up the smaller person and uh, related it to the bigger guy. So standardized joint space width allows better distinction, uh, especially when it comes to narrowing grades. And uh, it cancels out variation due to height uh, differences. And so you have more accurate, um, actually, numbers to compare with. <clears throat> but as I already told you, it's um, kind of some bias uh, what data you create and put in into a machine uh, to have uh, such distinction of characteristics. So artificial intelligence with a deep learning approach, actually here the data itself uh, learning uh, what is um, kind of um, a, a pattern of osteoarthritis or not osteoarthritis. So we put uh, 22,000 individual knees uh, of 3,500 patients and put it to an algorithm of deep learning. So basically the data learned itself by forward and backwards uh, feedback loops, uh, what is away and what is not in the pattern of the pixel spec basically. And then we kind of was testing this uh, on uh, another cohort of knee x-rays. And we found that uh, we really have a high sensitivity uh, to compare osteoarthritis present or not, and also have a high distinction of your joint space uh, up to 0 0.06 uh, uh, as the average error, uh, which is actually a very good count. So, and then we used this algorithm actually um, to increase the comparability of different readers. Uh, because we know, as I started my talk, uh, it's very individual how um, radiologists or orthopedic surgeons kind of uh, look at that, um, look at uh, the joint space uh, or the presence of osteoarthritis. So we had uh, aided uh, um, and unaided uh, group uh, modality here. You see uh, this was the x-ray they had to describe and then uh, it was uh, the whole data set was um, analyzed by our computer system and kind of uh, proposed uh, a calculated normal score and the trend space width and uh, the doctor had to agree. And so we get a more, much more harmonized uh, data set here. When we look at that, um, this is comparing uh, the findings of the uh, radiologists or orthopedic surgeons to the ground truth and also how the inter-individual comparability uh, or, uh, was um, kind of assessed. So we see that in the blue, this is unaided without the computer system. Uh, and the red with the computer system, we, we see that in all parameters, we come uh, into a better uh, mode or a better uh, interclass correlation, uh, which is uh, here reaches good or excellent uh, for those uh, parameters. So performing KL and RC readings with the aid of a software leads to increased uh, readers agreement and also increased readers specificity. <laughs> also uh, as an educational tool, we see here the, that um, when you use such a program, uh, you get a better standardized uh, data set, harmonized data set. Uh, here you see the unaided specialist, uh, the, the senior uh, radiologist, and they, <laughs> they actually quite a poor performance with respect to the ground truth, uh, which was assessed by other specialists of the whole data set. Uh, so the younger more uh, were uh, holding on to the, um, direction of how to assess the calculated neuron score and the elderly did not. So actually it also helps with that to harmonize the data set by different um, uh, readers. So this is uh, how you can do that. Uh, this is an initial study then a follow-up study. So you have a very good um, way how to really assess even very small changes in your joint space. Uh, and uh, you can show your patient that uh, his osteoarthritis has increased and is always slightly increasing, uh, which is very helpful uh, in this objective way to show patients' progression of disease. And that's actually very interesting. What is the progression of disease? Here we see two patients at baseline. Uh, when we follow them up by, uh, 
48 months later, we see uh, one of those has not progressed, the other one has progressed. So, so this is before, this is after. Um, so we see there's a progression happening in that. And so we looked in that, are there in, any indicators in the data uh, that we can look at uh, to uh, find out uh, what would be a prognostic value of this uh, progression? So we took uh, 4,100 images um, from patients and uh, uh, kind of feeded them into the computer and looked uh, who or what x-rays show the progression uh, of disease. And we came up here with a vector with the progression. You see if the client space goes down, uh, we have a progression of disease. And then uh, we found uh, and uh, correlated this um, with the uh, incidence of different uh, markers. And we see here that the sclerosis of TB and femur were very predictive. Of course, the joint space uh, is always predictive uh, if you have joint space narrowing. Uh, on the other hand, you see here that osteophytes, the presence of osteophytes really doesn't show a lot in the progression of disease. Uh, this means if you have some osteophytes, this doesn't mean um, uh, that your uh, osteoarthritis is progressing very rapidly during the next couple of years. Uh, this is also in line uh, with some theories about uh, the incidence of osteoarthritis that we have first happening something in the subtalar bone changes there, uh, which can also, of course, be um, noticed by the system of artificial intelligence. Uh, you see the pattern, you see um, the entropy, uh, which can be uh, kind of uh, assessed uh, by the system. Uh, and then the late cause is actually the sclerosis. Uh, when we get the progression of the disease. So uh, artificial analyzing systems can help uh, to be more accurate in osteoarthritis diagnostic. You have 92% of precision in detecting osteoarthritis, uh, very high accuracy around the same uh, of 93% uh, to detect joint space narrowing. And uh, also it uh, really increases the physician agreements rate to gold standard, and that's really very important when we look at data analysis uh, of studies, uh, because we have to have a very harm harmonized um, uh, assessment uh, after uh, the outcome of a study. So if we have different uh, meanings uh, of the same um, X-ray, we don't get good data in terms of uh, outcomes of uh, therapeutic actions. So the whole system is integrated in a, in a back system or can be integrated. So it's actually a one-stop thing that you have your X-ray, you can look at X-ray and then have the overlay uh, of this analyzing system, which is basically at no uh, time uh, when, uh, so it really helps to save your time actually. Um, and uh, because your readings are becoming uh, more harmonized and um, quicker in analyzing this uh, score, for instance, the calgary Ruan score. So with osteoarthritis, uh, with this method, we hope to have some paradigm change or shift. Uh, we're coming from a reactive model uh, of treatment to more a proactive model, uh, because uh, reactive model, we just see as the osteoarthritis is progressing. Uh, here, we might be enabled to kind of also have some prognostic values of uh, what is the risk uh, that the patient will increase his osteoarthritis uh, within the next uh, couple of years, which is actually very helpful uh, to kind of treat your patient or have preventive measurements that uh, that he doesn't get into this mode of osteoarthritis. Remember, overweight uh, or bad nutrition is one of the real um, background factors of osteoarthritis uh, progression. And second, you have a very good monitoring of the progression, so you can uh, teach and educate your patient uh, with a very exact uh, objective uh, analysis to help him to understand his disease. So for the future would be maybe uh, possible that we have a very early intervention because we see very early signs of osteoarthritis uh, and this will prevent uh, that we have to go into uh, treatment options by drugs or even replace the joint uh, later on. So the change of paradigm will be from subjective manual to digital standardized, uh, as you see it here, uh, to really have a very objective uh, analysis uh, of your OA diagnosis and OA progression. So with this, I thank you very much for your attention. And um, I hope to see you at some place uh, as it is not easy at this time. And um, stay healthy. Thank you. <laughs>